Welcome to our follow-up Mind and Market session, where we actually um, transition to, the, to number three uh, part of the multi-theories, uh, focusing on overcoming trading mistakes, overcoming trading mistakes. Now, the focus of what we're going to do today is originally, actually, if, if I read it from Slack, how to overcome your trading mistakes, but the, the subtopics are mistake culture and adapting to volatility, reviewing common mistakes, and ultimately, why is it so challenging to overcome greed and fear cycle? Okay, so the uh, video education resource for this is uh, pictured on the slide, and the opening point in that discussion and this presentation is all about mistakes. What is the textbook definition of a mistake? Ultimately, it's an act or judgment that is misguided or wrong. For example, trading without a trading plan is a big mistake. Now, um, there are people that don't have a trading plan and there are people that do, um, but don't follow it. So either way, it's still a, a variation of the same mistake. Um, and the buzzword kind of explanations are an error, fault, inaccuracy, omission, slip, blunder, miscalculation, misunderstanding, flaw, oversight, and so much more. Whatever word you use, ultimately, it's, it's, mistakes are part of life. Um, they are definitely part of trading. And what I wanted to say is they're also part of our uh, journey of learning. Um, and particularly when we are young, children, and I think this is an open question I, I had with some of you parents out there, potentially would have been here some time ago. Um, I mean, whether it's children learning how to walk for the first time, they start crawling and then they walk. Um, and there's this whole philosophy of failing forward in order to uh, walk, they have to, you know, tumble a few times um, in their crawling phase. There's that one point. Also, when they go to school, they will take exams and there'll be this big uh, kind of multi-year conditioning of uh, having high standards of learning, making sure that we pass the exam. Um, and that's all great. But uh, what it often does is it leads to this um, concern, this psychological, emotional concern of what happens when we get something wrong uh, or we make mistakes. And ultimately, if we fail, and now the reality is in trading, at least half the time you're going to get it wrong, you're going to make a mistake, and you're going to fail. Um, and it's the rest of the time where you are in profit or you're just on the right side of the trade that you're in the money. But it's actually not the amount of times that you make money that makes you money in a successful, consistent track record. What makes you money over the long term is how you manage the risk and how you manage your mistakes. Let me just kind of reweigh that scale for everyone here. So yes, being profitable matters, but what matters more is how you manage your risk and how you manage your mistakes. That is my number one insight for our session today. And so if you all agree with me on that one point, then it leads to one conclusion. We then have to learn how to deal with mistakes, how to deal with failure. And when I say deal with it, not just deal with it, ah, I did this um, and I got to feel better about it. No, how can I be stronger from it? How can I develop a best practice or, or key learning insight in order to improve? It, it's that failing forward. It's that progression, uh, which is key. Um, and, it's, and it's a lifetime journey, particularly when we have a lifetime of conditioning uh, to reprogram. Now, what matters in addition to that is the environment is always changing. Uh, change is constant both in life and markets. And here's an example of a change pattern of volatility based on the VIX index. The VIX is uh, the futures volatility pricing of the US equity market, S&P 500. And we can see here spikes in volatility over several years. Um, and What's interesting, of course, um, is that it forms a pattern 
what I call a compression pattern. You can see there's a three-year compression pattern, high vol leading to low vol. And it's during the low vol periods where there's a squeeze in the market and people get comfortable because volatility is low. And so the sentiment is, 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 uh, is um, complacency. And then you, you know, ultimately people get, uh, we start to crowd out with, into trades and into certain psychological conditioning that creates um, a mean reversion setup with a negative surprise and a spike to the upside. And that's what we see here in early 2018, late 2018, of course, the pandemic of 2020, which isn't on this chart, um, but you, that was the biggest spike on the chart. Um, and then also we had spikes in volatility uh, late last year and definitely early this year in Jan uh, with one of the most volatile months since the global financial crisis of 2008. Um, so volatility is key and it's, it's, it's a constant change in markets and that change factor is something that we need to adapt to. Uh, now, it's very hard to adapt to things when we have this multidimensional uh, perspective of uh, time and, uh, and just the general processing of, of information. When we make mistakes, we often look to the back to the past, uh, which is fine. Uh, but if we stay stuck in the past or stuck in the mud of the past, that becomes an issue because it starts to weigh on our shoulders um, and anchor us into the ground uh, and make it very difficult for us to then be in the present and, and uh, progress into the future. So I would like to kind of revive the metaphor of being in your car and I will just do this full screen. So you've got this, the full visual in your car, driving away, but not looking in the front, look in the review mirror. In your car, driving away, but not looking in front, looking back in the review mirror. Now, can anyone tell me what the issue is with doing that? What is the problem driving, looking in the review mirror? I can see everything that's going on behind me, but what can't I see? Anyone who gave me a, a heads up? Thank you, Sarah, set up for a crash. Um, and although this is so obvious and, and funny when I um, uh, give you that um, de physical demonstration, the reality is how many of us do this on a regular basis? <laughs> and often we don't realize it. So that's ultimately the issue about being overly charged in the past. And, and what I used to say to people is that the, the additional challenge is that we are programmed to do that in order to be better risk managers. We need to know some of the problems of the past so that we can learn from those risks and do two things as human beings. One, stay alive. Two, evolve so that we can you know, be, be, be better over time. The issue is if we overindulge in the past and in the risk management and we turn it into a fear panic situation then that creates a uh, a domino effect uh, a vicious cycle um, that becomes very difficult to recover from to the extent that we can have a car crash metaphorically speaking um, and not be aware of present and future um, options and outcomes. Uh, now, if in terms of the future, it's great to have a map to the future um, and really be very intentional about your journey ahead, but make sure that they're not too far out ahead where it becomes cloud in the sky um, and too abstract and, 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 and not something that you can be accountable for. Um, and then, of course, in the present, probably the best place to be um, in terms of here and now. And what I often tell people is if you click your thumbs, there goes a moment, click again, another moment, and then just a third time lucky, a third moment to go. Um, so each of these clicks of the finger is a moment that has just passed in the moment from one moment to the other. The question is, what do you do from one moment to the other? How do you perceive the world? How do you 
um, uh, reflect on some of the trading experiences that you have um, and ultimately what action steps you take. Okay, so present, past and future and the big challenge for us all is dealing with the past in a constructive way. This is the map to the future. Always great when you can look out ahead um, in a way that you can put the past in context of a future path um, and then ultimately uh, progress and, and uh, push forward. Now, one of the um, key lessons from the top and, and citations uh, from a sports um, guru um, in basketball is Michael Jordan. Um, who famously said, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career, lost almost 300 games 26 times, been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeed. So big question that I'd like to ask people with this quote is, is Michael Jordan saying it's absolutely fine to fail and make mistakes and actually we should just carry on doing exactly that? Or is he saying something more deeper, meaningful and forward looking? I mean, what do you think? Anyone wanna type in the chat, tell me what you think Michael Jordan is saying in this quote. Sebastian saying sense of effort, absolutely perseverance is key. And that as, as another person once said, I think it's uh, Sylvester Stallone from the Rocky uh, series. Um, it's not how hard you punch that counts. It's how many times you get back up after being punched down to the ground. Uh, not word for word the quote, but it's just as best as I can remember it. Um, and so it's this idea of really perseverance, sense of effort and pushing forward no matter what. And another way of, of framing this is failing forward. How many of you have heard of the term failing forward? You can fail and you will likely fail. You'll definitely do so in trading um, several times on average 51% um, uh, 51 of the time you'll you'll be successful and 49% of the time you won't. Uh, if you think of it as a coin toss, or if you think about it as a win-loss ratio um, outcome, it's gonna happen. But what do you do when it happens? And so failing forward is, is the key philosophy here, which does require uh, uh, perseverance. It requires mental agility uh, in terms of being able to adapt uh, to the changes but also in terms of the decision-making process. Okay, so open question. What trading mistakes have you all made? So if you can type in the chat um, some examples, I'm going to give you some big categories. And the opening one, as you all type in the chat, is too emotional. So how many of you have experienced being too emotional as traders? Thumbs up or type in the chat. Too emotional? On average, many traders find a highly emotional uh, experience um, live in the market. I can tell you the good news is as a human being uh, and a trader, um, being emotional is very natural um, and extremes or emotions are the things to be aware of and maybe better manage and optimize but two things avoid thinking that you can control your emotions or remove your emotions um, emotions are feedback mechanisms they have information that we need to be aware of in the moment uh, the key is how we react to our emotions, not the emotions themselves. Over time, you will influence your emotions, but the best way to do that is to focus on your actions more than your emotions. Um, monitor your emotions, learn about your emotions, be mindful of your emotions, uh, but focus on your actions if you want tangible and practical results. 
Um, so uh, Sarah's saying fear of losing profits and exiting trade prematurely is an emotional um, um, uh, experience in trading uh, that I think many people um, uh, do talk about. And I think it's a good um, example um, of this first category. Second one, no trading plan, or there is a trading plan, but it's not being followed. Um, how many of you have experienced that? No trading plan is a plan to fail, um, or you do have a plan, but you're just not following it. Okay, so I see thumbs up there from Sia, um, and, and maybe a few others to follow. Uh, this is also quite common, especially if you're trading for the first time and learning uh, about a new framework. Um, a plan is better than no plan. So I would say start with something. Um, the additional point is whatever you do have, make sure it's clearly defined, rule-based, evidence-driven um, so that you can follow it and it is robust and you can build some um, confidence in it. Um, and when you do, you will then be more inclined to follow the plan. Okay. Following the plan also means trusting the plan um, and um, being disciplined to do so. Um, so it, just giving you some, some points um, on this point, uh, on this area. Matthew saying over trading uh, revenge trading is uh, uh is is a trigger uh sebastian is saying how often do you update your plan once a month that's a good question i would say you could do i mean in terms of trading for the long term you could do when i think when you start out you do maybe weekly assess reassessment uh, but over time that shifts to monthly and quarterly so i would say you start off weekly transition to weekly monthly but over time it's monthly quarterly and traditionally quarterly but that's after you know extended experience um, for the long-term trading does that help sebastian you don't want to over optimize the trading plan because if you do uh, you're you're likely curve fitting um, and um, also likely being trigger happy and trading noise not signal so if you're going to be triggered by all the price noise that is uh, 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 um, feeding back to your uh, trading system, then, I mean, yes, that will lead to uh, the mistakes of over trading, but also the mistakes of um, changing your system too many times and not giving it uh, the ability to be uh, robust. Okay, third point overconfidence on externals so what does that mean that means being you know focused on the outside not the inside outside in terms of market gurus and outside in terms of trading systems as an example so neither of these two things are bad um, uh, there are many professional market experts out there that are useful to listen to um, as well as tried and tested trading systems that you can consider uh, to um, review. The problem is when we are over dependent on either one, uh, we give up responsibility of our trading uh, decisions. And ultimately when things go wrong, what do we do? We play the blame game. It was X, Y, we start uh, doing X QITIS. Um, uh, um, behavior. Uh, and ultimately what matters more is not um, why something happened, but what do we do about it? And the only person that can do anything about uh, trade management, risk, or money management is you. You are the owner of your portfolio and ultimately your trade destiny. So claim that responsibility, um, find your own light, uh, and as I like to say, avoid getting burned by someone else's light, uh, trading expert or trading system. Now, I've had people say to me in the past, okay, but you're also a trading expert. Does that mean we shouldn't listen to you uh, when you're posting on social media or whether you're 
you've got a, a media interview or podcast um, session. If, if you choose to listen, that's fine, uh, as you would do with anyone else, but make sure you have a, an inbuilt GPS system, not just in your phone, but in you, um, so that you can always apply due diligence and good judgment uh, about any information that you are processing. Everyone okay with that? So overconfidence on externals, nothing wrong with external sources. Just make sure that it's going through um, uh, a, a checking system internally and that ultimately you claim responsibility on your own decision. Thumbs up. Gonna wait to see if uh, that resonates, if everyone's okay with that, type yes in the chat, or just give me a thumbs up um, as a note. Okay, great. And I have uh, just recently uh, been working with uh, a lady trader that, that was using a trading system as, as a case in point, um, and then decided it wasn't for her because uh, performance turned from positive to negative uh, uh, late last year, but also it did not resonate for her. She wanted to make her own uh, manual decisions on trading and not, uh, not just outsource it to a trading system. Uh, fourth out of five point loss aversion, fear of losing money. No one likes to lose money. Um, and that's an obvious point, but um, it is something that we are born with. It is programmed. And so the key there is just to accept that that is just the nature, it, it, that is human nature. Um, but we don't want to add to it um, and create a, a systemic problem where in the example that we just heard from Sayer, I believe, um, we lose profits and exit trades prematurely. That is a very common uh, condition of loss aversion. So fear of losing money or fear of making mistakes or fear of failure. Uh, there are best practices that we can learn to try and better manage and optimize that. I'll touch on that when we discuss um, the challenges of greed and fear. Okay, fifth and final category of trading mistakes is poor money management. And I'm giving you an example of psychology, risk, and, and money management. Um, so on here, uh, the wise words of American investor Warren Buffett, Rule number one, never lose money. Rule number two, never forget rule number one. Um, obviously we will lose money at some point in time, but we're minimizing the money that is lost. So maximizing the money that we make, minimizing the money that is lost and not the other way around. These are the three areas I mentioned, psychology, strategy, risk and money. Um, and in terms of behavioral bias that we'll cover in the follow-up session next week, uh, these are some of the areas that we will revisit, uh, which relate to trading mistake and behavioral biases. Just keep in mind um, that there are two categories, emotional and cognitive. Emotional is impulsive, spontaneous uh, reaction that will cause you to deviate from rational thinking. Cognitive is the same, but it's a mental shortcut. It's a mental shortcut in terms of uh, your mental perception of things or how you process information, okay? Um, now, on the fear, greed, on, on the emotional side, fear and greed is at the heart of that experience. Um, and two examples are loss aversion and overconfidence. And I will cover that in today's session. So on emotional biases, remember roller coaster ride. Um, and what I'm going to do is ask four of you to rotate through this cycle. So if um, Sebastian can begin with number one, Thea can follow with number two, or Jacqueline can do number three, and Matthew can do number four. And then just shift through. I think you're all going to take at least two or three roles and, and speak with clarity, uh, context and authenticity, keep it real, as if you were in this uh, trading example, how would that, what would you think and how would, how would you feel? Uh, I'll let Sebastian go first. 
So, uh, sorry, I catch up uh, on this. Uh, number one, the price is going up. Let's watch the market. So, yeah, the the price is going up. That's uh, that sounds like there's a reversal. So that's that can be a moment to to be ready for entering the market. Absolutely. And Sarah, how about yourself to follow up? Number two. The trend is holding up. I'll buy at the next consolidation. Sounds good. Zachary. I miss the consolidation, but if I wait any longer, I won't profit from the trend. I think that I I miss the my position. Okay, Matthew. Uh, I mean, good thing I didn't wait. Um, there you go, because you're in profit. No matter what you do, you're in the money. You're on the right side of the market in stage number four, and and things are good. Number five, Sebastian. I'll use this correction to increase my position. Yay, position sizing. Um, at, a, at a cheaper valuation, if we're talking stocks or cheaper price, if we're talking anything else, uh, which does work, buy low so you can sell high. But there, number six. Brilliant, at this price, let's double it. There we go, now we start to get really, um, engaged and all in with the trade. Um, what started out to be a sensible strategy is now um, building up more risk. Number seven. Oh, as soon as you go back up, I'm selling out. Yeah, because now right. just one third of the position that's been lost or half, it's two thirds. I mean, if, if, you, if you're looking just um, at that point, as far as you're concerned, it, it's, it's more than you, you bargained for in terms of trade last. I don't believe it. It's down to eight and a quarter. Uh, it's about to hit uh, absolute bottom. And eight and a quarter can be whatever number is meaningful to you. So if it's crypto world, change it for that. Um, if it's a currency or an equity market or, or, or commodity, just choose that price tag that is key to you in terms of the amount of money that was lost or in terms of the actual price scale. Okay, so, so clearly don't believe it. Denial has set in, um, but there's a belief that it hit the bottom, hit the bottom. And this is catching the falling knife territory. We are hoping and praying that we can do magic, catch the falling knife without getting harmed and call the market bottom prematurely. Number nine. Okay, let's wait for it to recover. Otherwise this will have to be a long term investment. Isn't that something that so many people, traders and investors um, experience? They start short term and they shift to medium term, long term. How many people have had that experience or have heard someone say that to them before? Thumbs up. This is very common. Um, and it's okay if that is you know, the, the true intention of the decision. I'm shifting from strategy X to, to strategy Y. Or, or horizon this to horizon that. But if you're doing it impulsively, if you're doing it as part of a last minute risk management uh, decision, usually a bad idea um, and a sign of a behavioral bias that will continue uh, to weigh on you in the future. <clears throat> Not least because you, you are now justifying and normalizing this big drop in your portfolio as a short-term loss in a long-term uh, investment, which actually should have been a short, uh, a big loss um, in, 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 in the original strategy that I had decided, and I need to you know, risk manage or get the hell out of the trade. Okay, number 10. What are the SEC doing about this? Yes, yeah, so now, we get, we're in fear and panic mode, but instead of being accountable to that fear and panic, we are outsourcing it. We're like, you know what? It's the regulators. It's the government. It's the training college that I attended. It's the coach. <laughs> it's my, uh, my family. It's my friends. It's, it's anyone but me. Uh, enough, I'm selling out and staying out. 
Um, Yay! So, Rationality, yeah. better late than never. <laughs> what's thing. your sense? Oh, oh, sorry. I was just going to say while Matthew's there, Matthew, what's your sense about eleven? Oh, sorry. I I, I guess I was on mute. Uh, enough. I'm selling out and staying out. So I guess uh, motions were too much. I can I couldn't hold on to the trade. Yeah, overwhelming, right? Just just taking control. Uh, mental and psychological fatigue sits in. My uh, what is it? Flight and flight or flight? Sorry. Yeah. Flight yeah sorry. Flight yeah, response has been suppressed. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, so survival instincts kick in and fight or flight response basically take over. Um, and so instinctually that's what happens, but, but, but also it, it, it just becomes overwhelming um, and, and, and we get out, but arguably we get out too late, but, but as I said, better late than never. Sarah, over to you, number 12. Okay, before I say this, I'm gonna say, oh, I should have put my stop, then I wouldn't have lost so much. But good thing I sold everything. <laughs> Wonderful uh, uh, preface to, to uh, or context, I should say, to, to number 12. So yeah, so having a stop, what a great idea. Um, even if the stop kind of got you out too early, at least it got you out. Um, and sometimes the best trade is no trade. So just always keep that in mind when you're in that difficult situations and, um, and doubt is in the air. Um, when in doubt, get out. There's a trading uh, insight that I heard before. Obviously, you can get out too early, uh, but in this context, uh, getting out is, is the main point. Uh, and you know, risk management using stop losses is what is a obvious and key way to do that. Number thirteen. Uh, a quick, quick question on that. So, what if you are stopped out um, and price does continue in your favor? How do you? approach that mentally um so you can go back to the next trade fresh um after yeah. you take a series of losses like that we'll say yeah um great question and an important one for us to all to consider um i would say there are levels of responses the first one is i mean just basically reassess um uh from a market strategy, but also a mindset um, fra uh, framing in terms of uh, what 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 needs to change. Often, the more uh, uh, challenging the experience, the more time we need to change. Uh, and so sometimes it's good just to take a break, uh, either a brief, what I call diet coke break, where you just kind of you know walk away from the desk. Um, maybe maybe go go for a lunch and, and then come back, or maybe it's an overnight break, or maybe it's a one week break. Um, in very adverse situations, it, it it people take longer time out. Maybe they um, uh, do something that can just reset uh, themselves. And so I, I'd say it depends on the the level um, of the charge and the experience. Um, and, 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 and what's required. But first and foremost, I would say, uh, make, make a reassessment in the moment. Uh, definitely uh, look to optimize the market strategy in terms of risk and money management, um, and then just the general mindset. Um, and then if a break is required, uh, each person will know what type of break and for how long. Got it, thank you. Yeah. I, and, and it really is case specific. I've, I've, I've heard different stories for different traders. But definitely not getting back in immediately afterwards um, and trying to kind of salvage the trade because if you do that, it's a revenge trading, but revenge trading, not only, which is not, not a good thing and we don't recommend it, but it's revenge trading at exactly the wrong time. <laughs> you know, uh, because literally the market halved in value or lost two thirds. Uh, uh, or more, um, and then it gets into a risk of ruin situation where it's no longer trade loss; it's it's blowing up the account, and and that's obviously something that you know no one would 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 want to um, experience. Um, but there are examples of this, by the way, in terms of day to day. 
uh, exercises. And so it's always good just to kind of take the baby step experience as opposed to, you know, the Armageddon situation. What we're seeing here is the Armageddon situation. That's, this is a market crash where things go uh, crazy. Crypto is probably a case in point right now in terms of the big fall that's happened uh, since last year, uh, but also the equity market as part of that kind of big picture risk off uh, move. Okay, uh, number 14. Told you so. There we go. So we're, we're, not, we're still not taking accountability. We're just telling people <laughs> uh, what, what, you know, what, what we're, we're already thinking. Number 15. You oh, what? The double oh my God, it's going back up. <laughs> there we go. Now we're, still, we're still in denial, in doubt, um, and in, in what seems to be a, a guessing game. 16. What the? There we go. Now we resort to swearing. <laughs> uh, WTF moments. 17. Oh, I think the mic's muted. 17. More crazy who are going to get taken to cleaners, to the cleaners. Yeah, these crazy people that are trading. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> 18. This is it. I knew this was going to happen all along. There we go. And, and it's only when, you know, we are back to where we were before. Look, point number six, which is in line with point number 18, except for this big crash that happened in the middle. Um, now we're, we're normalizing to where we were back then, completely ignoring, in denial, and now suffering from amnesia in terms of uh, that roller coaster ride. And then finally, 19. Right, I'll buy in again. It's cheaper than last time anyhow. And, and, and all of a sudden, we've just we bought the ticket at the fun fair uh, and, and asked ourselves to go on that roller coaster ride all over again, only to make the same mistakes, in, past mistakes in, in the present and the future as part of this emotional roller coaster ride. So I want you all to, to really think about that journey that we just took in a few minutes. Um, and I often encourage people to go through this, not uh, you know, as a mental exercise, not to, uh, I mean, it's fun, uh, but, but, but not just you know, for fun, but also just to really experience, um, challenge yourself, and then just ask yourself, you know, how does this happen to me? And if, if at all, um, and, and how can I learn from these lessons and, and uh, better manage the situation if and when it happens again? Okay, everyone okay with that invitation I've given you to do? Just give me a thumbs up. Okay. Yes. And some of you have already asked me questions, which is great. Uh, but I want you to continue the, the question process, reflect, write down some action points in terms of, you know, uh, what would you do differently to improve that particular stage? And then ask yourself, you know, what market does this look similar to? Is it market X or B? Um, just, just to make it more meaningful. Okay, now that takes us on to the greed and fear cycle. Um, and the wise words of Warren, Barn, uh, Warren Buffett, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. How many of you have heard that statement before? Thumbs up, please, or yes in the chat. Okay, so I think the majority of you have heard it. Great. Here's my question. Um, and let me ask Sebastian, why is it so hard to apply? Well, <laughs> First of all, you never know when it's time to, when it's the bottom. So you might want to buy when the, the market uh, is um, fearful. Uh, however, you might catch a falling knife. So it's, it's kind of risky to buy the dip because you never know when it's the bottom unless you have uh, clear indicators. So it's hard to apply in terms of uh, knowing exactly when is the, the dip. And secondly, uh, well, if, it's hard also if you have uh, uh, 
purchased when uh, if you are placed along that is not profitable then you cannot you cannot benefit from buying the dip because you can't anymore if you are fully engaged on the market so it's difficult to to uh, i have experimented that by the past uh, i'm talking about personal investment here uh, by you know uh, being fully engaged on, on one position and then uh, you realize uh, it's going down and you would have liked to be able to buy the dip but you can't because you you are already uh, fully engaged so the let the takeaway from it is uh, reduce the size of positions always keep uh, uh, yeah, be say be be, uh, be more cautious and uh, invest less at the same time and uh, also uh, um, try to diversify as well because one asset can go down the other one uh, can uh, can go up so you you, you 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 it's important not to 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 go into only one asset and and diversify so um the fear and greed uh, 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 cycles yes I, I heard that a lot uh, buying uh, you know go, going a uh, against the trend uh, or uh, and and uh, there is a there is a on, on twitter there is a fear and, and greed index right now it's completely at the extreme fear so people say it's time to buy well hold on a minute time to buy now but how, how about if the market is halving uh, even more so for example if, if you buy now the price is divided by two in two weeks so it's uh i'd say be cautious with that uh, and and uh, buy the by the deep is, uh, is 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 said in every in every place, but uh, pay attention not to to fall to to catch a falling knife. Yeah, absolutely. And and just to well, first of all, great insights there. And I'm just going to quickly um, add further context to what you said about buying the dip, um, especially in the current market context. So there is a chart which I can provide there uh, later on which shows how the uh, equity market, particularly in the US, um, was trending up uh, on its, uh, above its averages, particularly the uh, technical 50-day average. Um, and many, many times it would hit the average and bounce up, back up. Uh, so buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip worked for over one year, uh, partly because the market had not corrected more than 5%. We're talking about the equity market now, not correcting more than 5%. And what do we teach you in technical classes 101? Corrections are healthy and they often correct 10, 20, and actually you know, 30 plus percent. So one third, half, or two thirds. Imagine a market that doesn't correct more than 5% for a year. Buy the dip or buy and hold is going to be the best strategy in town, particularly when the central banks are intervening, pumping lots of liquidity post COVID kind of pandemic. Um, and FOMO, fear of missing out, is the, is the strongest thing ever. So, in that situation, mindset conditioning is strong. Uh, the crowd is always right and tall, the trend is reversing. And that's what we now see um, in markets right now. And then at this stage, you're saying, hey, this could be the market bottom. When in the case of what Sebastian is saying, it could be the market bottom short term, but what about long term? Will there be a halving or, or more? And this is why the fear greed game is so difficult because in order to know at what stage um, is a market extreme uh, in terms of greed at the top, fear at the bottom, you need to know what a little bit more context on those inflection points. Is that useful, everyone? If you just give me a thumbs up and I'll uh, take note. Okay, great. Um, usually I give you a live example, but I think with this one, it was better to um, annotate. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the screen. Um, so here you can see the, the greed, greed and fear cycle. There are different stages, part of a traffic light um, uh, stage by stage process with, with the uh, 
related colors. Um, so in blue, you see market cycle uh, uh, rising up uh, and then peaking, but the risk reward profile uh, uh, tracking along the way. And it's the mid stage where uh, we can make money and at, at the expense of reasonable risk um, without being too concerned, but only when we get into this kind of uh, heightened kind of late st stage cycle um, where we can make a lot of money, but the risk of the risk is too high. And often it's not just a high risk thing. It's a risk of ruin. Uh, we can, we can lose far more than we can ever win them back and potentially uh, blow up the account in, in a worst case scenario. So that is, that is, that is how markets generally work. But, but here's the, here's the fun fact, even though we know the risks, uh, we like to trade in the high risk zone because that's where we can make the most money in a short space of time. Um, so if we're smart and experienced enough, that's okay. If we're not, it's a big problem. Um, so just keep that in mind in terms of the green fear cycle um, in this market example and the risk reward profile and how there are stages of it uh, where it's moderate to reasonable risk and then uh, it, it's more extreme. Uh, also, there's a level of emotional intensity. So you can see at the bottom there, um, that also matters uh, because that's the stress uh, that will then build up over time, depending on uh, what stage in the cycle we're in and the amount of risk that we're taking on. Now, what I will do in session two, I will talk to you about uh, loss aversion. Um, this is one of the biggest uh, biases in the market. Um, and I will also uh, speak about the uh, uh, prospect theory and this relationship between uh, uh, risk reward uh, uh, profit and gain, a uh, profit and loss, um, and ultimately pain and pleasure. Um, and the point here is that the pain of loss is twice as great as, as the pleasure and equal gain. Um, and we will then also talk about confidence um, as being the flip side of, of that and um, how this can be experienced by each of you. Great. Have a good week ahead and look forward to speaking to you all next week.